that time to bust out something incredibly special. Something monumental, something epic, but what could it be? I'm your host, Garrett K. Jones. Join me as I introduce a very special guest author for an even more special edition of Author Awareness. Hey, happy Saturday and happy new year, everyone. I hope the holidays were better than anyone expected for everyone. I'll be honest, I'm not really sure what to make of how the holidays went. I was really hoping that Christmas would recapture this last year and bring some light and joy to close out 2020. It was meh at best. I think we can all agree that watching Tony Stark smite himself in the endgame was a much better highlight in 2019 than all of 2020 combined. But I'm hoping we'll be able to turn things around in 2021. I want to take care of a few housekeeping items before getting into the content of today's video. First up, there are some changes to Patreon that are taking place. Instead of launching new videos weeks in advance, that takes a lot of time, I'm opening up a bi-monthly Discord server. All patrons will have access to the link, which will include date and time to access the server and chat with me about pretty much anything so long as it isn't inappropriate. The first link access will actually be available a week from today. Second, I've pared down the items in the merch store. There are just two styles of shirt, one for women and one for men. The mug is there, the hoodie is still there, the phone cases, and of course the poster. Buy the merch and rep it on Instagram and Twitter and tag me with the hashtag Five Kingdoms Merch. As for this poster, this giveaway is still open and free to sign up. I'll announce the winner when I hit 200 YouTube subscribers. Lastly, as promised, three major media formats are happening with my series. First off, I did a soft launch of the new full-color spread of the character profiles on my companion site. Second, with the recent passing of my grandmother, a woman who saw a crap ton of history, I am dedicating the entire fourth season of Storytellers, my podcast, in her memory. The episodes will be me sharing some of the stories that I know of from my grandmother and my own anecdotes of spending time with her. Third, the audiobook edition of The Heirs of Menonias is officially underway. Recording has begun and I'll provide more details in this month's Forming Fantasy video. Before going any further with the video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications on new videos. You can select notifications for all videos, or you can select notifications based on your preferences. If you're watching on your phone, be sure to update those settings inside the app itself to get the most out of your viewing experience. All right, so I finally hit 100. Episodes, that is. This is the milestone 100th vlog of my series, and I couldn't be more excited. Last season, when I hit episode 50, I invited two authors, my friends John Harrison and Karma Marie, to come on the show and do an interview about their works. This season, I decided to go even bigger. In connecting with some authors on Twitter, I was able to meet and arrange for an interview with British science fiction Association Award winner Gareth L. Powell. Now even before I got the opportunity to connect with him on Twitter, Powell's books had already been popping up in the recommendation list that I have on Kindle and Audible. And then he started following me, ironically enough. So of course, I naturally started following him and I got a little gutsy and so I invited him to do an interview for this 100th episode. Now, back in November, I started reading the first book in his Embers of War series, which is called Embers of War. It is a very intriguing and incredibly excellent read. A lot of deep world building goes into this story, but I think any sci-fi fan will enjoy it. So without any further ado, let's get into this author awareness interview. 
Hey, Gareth, thank you for agreeing to the interview. I really appreciate it. Tell us about your Embers of War series. Hi, Gareth. Yeah, thank you for thank you for having me here. It's uh, it's a pleasure. If I had to sum up my writing in uh, a short soundbite, I'd probably say I write about ordinary people in extraordinary situations. Um, that's because I don't sort of write about huge, heroic, super capable um, sort of Captain Kirk types. I write more about everyday people doing their jobs, trying to get by, trying to survive, while getting caught up in all these um, adventures and, and disasters and things that befall them. Um, I think if I sort of compared it to a, to a film, I, I'm not really writing Star Wars with, with kind of Jedis and Chosen Ones and, and Destinies and all of that. I'm more writing sort of Alien which is, you know, just a, a tugboat crew caught up in um, events beyond their control. So it is um, trying to make relatable everyday characters and use those to kind of explore the, the um, amazing things that they uh, face. How did you get into writing? Was this something that you've discovered as a recent talent in the last few years? Or was this something that you've always wanted to do like a lot of other writers? Yes, absolutely. I've always, um, I've always been interested in writing. I've always told stories. Uh, when I was uh, sort of nine or ten years old, I filled up a load of spiral-topped reporter's notebooks with this sort of long, uh, meandering space opera that was kind of based sort of a bit on Blake Seven, a bit on Star Trek, you know, whatever had been on the telly that night. There, I think there were some. Battlestar Galactica influences in there and when I got to the end of the uh, each notebook got to the last page I'd, I'd quickly write a, a sudden cliffhanger like an alien comes through the door with a gun or something and then I'd get a new notebook and start from there and just keep going and it was it was just for fun and it was just something that I did for my own amusement um, but since then I've, I've always kind of wanted to be a a writer. I always wanted to be a storyteller. I was never sure how one went about doing it, um, and for a long time I lacked the kind of the experience and the discipline to do it. But when we reached the year 2000, um, it was also my 30th birthday that year, and I thought, right, now is the time to get serious. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and so I started. I started writing then, and, and my first um, my first novel was published ten years later. What are some of your inspirations as a writer? Do you draw from film or music, nature, art? What is it? Well, I believe I already mentioned um, the Alien movies. Um, I think the, between them and Blade Runner, they're very much um, responsible for the, the sort of aesthetic in my work. Um, the way I see my characters and their surroundings in my head has that kind of industrial used, scuffed kind of um, look to it, um, very much so. In terms of writers, I mean, um, William Gibson was a huge initial influence, in, uh, especially on my short stories, um, in that he, he was also writing about um, people on the level of the street. so. Um, people kind of adapting to technology and and hustlers and, and and other people who aren't sort of traditional sci-fi hero types if you see what I mean so um, he, he was an important influence there was also Ian, Ian Banks uh, Ian M Banks his culture novels are just some of my favorite writing and you know I've read them a lot of times and I would really like to kind of to live in the culture. It's it's just such a fantastic utopia, and I like the fact that instead of having any leaders of the culture or anything, Banks writes about people on the fringes, the the grunts and the you know uh, the people getting caught up and having to to, to go run around and, and and do these small missions that have these huge repercussions, and but they have huge personal repercussions as well as political and, and um, military repercussions so and they're just so beautifully written as well and they're, they're sort of by turns hilarious and absolutely heartrending 
and horrific. So those, although I, I don't think I write like um, Ian, I, he certainly was a big influence for me to get into space opera. Um, I've always loved space opera. My first novel, Silver Sands, was a space opera. But after I'd written the the Akak Macak trilogy, which is sort of more cyberpunk um, alt history, um, it was uh, Ian uh, had just died, and I thought, well, a great light had gone out of space opera, and I really wanted to to write something, um, not to replace him or, or anything, but I just wanted to to write a space opera, and and so I just wrote Embers of War and. The rest is history. What has been the hardest part or the biggest challenge in the creation of your work? Well, the uh, the biggest recent challenge I've had has obviously was was twenty twenty and the lockdown and and all that accompanying stress and disorientation. Um, I would say, yeah, for the for the first half of the year, I found it extremely difficult to to write anything creative. Um, I also found it extremely difficult to read. I hardly read a book for the first half of the year because I just couldn't seem to focus on anything um, for any length of time um, because of the stress um, and the worry. So that was extremely difficult. I was writing a novel for Titan Books and I ended up handed it, handing it in like four months late because the words just weren't coming out and they, they certainly weren't come. And what did come out certainly wasn't any good. So. It took a long time to sort of battle through that and it was really challenging and for a while it had me really worried. I thought maybe I'd lost the knack for, for writing altogether. But uh, in the last few months it seems to have been coming back and I seem to be making progress on a new novel. So fingers crossed we get through the worst of it. But yeah, 2020 was pretty much the biggest challenge um, I've ever faced in terms of writing. What was it like to find out that you won a BSFA award? Oh yes, it was tre tremendously exciting to be nominated uh, for the uh, British Science Fiction Association Award. Um, I uh, I first won it in 2013 um, for my novel Akak Macak, uh, which I, I co-won the award that year with Anne Leckie um, and her, her novel Ancillary Justice, which is a fantastic novel. So that was a huge honour. And then to win it again... Um, with uh, Embers of War was um, just just amazing. Um, I was so pleased with Embers of War, and I was so grateful it it, it won that, and uh, it was sh um, shortlisted for the Locus Award as well, which was fantastic. And the thing that really made the BSFA special there was because it's voted for by uh, members of the British Science Fiction Association and. Um, attendees at the at the Easter Con convention, so it was readers who had voted for it, and people who were very involved in science fiction had, had voted for it, and that really did make it quite special for me. Um, also, the fact that Embers was up against some fantastic books that year um, by sort of Emma Newman and Taddy Thompson and Dave Hutchinson, and it was just. An amazing field to be part of and it was just a huge honor to uh, to actually win that year so yeah I mean any award or any recommendation is always a huge honor um, and I don't think I'll, I'll ever get used to uh, being nominated for them if you could give any advice to other would-be authors out there what exactly would you say to them to give them that help that they need if I could give any advice for other would-be authors out there um, I would say don't treat all advice as prescriptive. Um, you will hear people say you have to write every day. You don't. You'll see. Uh, I certainly don't. You will see people say, "Oh, you have to do this. You have to do that. You have to write in Scrivener. You have to write." What the most important thing to do is is to search through all that advice and find the bits that work for you. Because some of it won't work for you and some of it will. And finding the bits that work for you is the most important. Um, so if you find that sitting in bed writing in your laptop is your ideal way of working, do that. If you find that only working on Saturdays works for you, only work on Saturdays. If you find, you know... Um, 
there's all sorts of things. Uh, uh, um, my sister, who's also um, a novelist, has been uh, doing a thing where she writes 200 words a day, and she's she's written like 120,000 words that way, because 200 words a day is not much. You know, it's it's half an hour's work maybe, um, but it really adds up if you if you do it over the course of a year. So you know that works for her. I don't always feel up to writing every day. Uh, real life intrudes, obviously, so you, you know, I just have to fit it in where and when I can. Um, that's one thing, and I mean, I mean, uh, in terms of, you know, I, I write everything in Word. I start at the beginning and write through to the end, because that's how I learned to write on a typewriter, um, where you couldn't sort of cut and paste and dot around quite so much as you can on a word processor, but people who've grown up with, like, word processors and, and things might enjoy Scrivener where, you, where it's got all sorts of different notes and, and you can track things and, and it all looks like a lot of hard work to me so um, I, I just I just write in Word as if I'm typing onto a page really so um, you know whatever works for you works for you and you shouldn't feel bad and compare yourself to other people find the fun find the way that works for you and find what makes it enjoyable because if it's just an epic, miserable slog, then why even do it? You know, find the fun um, and enjoy yourself. A big thank you goes out to Gareth L. Powell for his participation in this extra special author awareness interview. Now, if you would like to know more about his work or if you want to connect with him through his website and social media, all of the links are down there in the description box. You can check them out as you need to. His books are available in most major retailers, including Barnes & Noble and Amazon. You can also find his books on Kindle and Audible, which is where I found his first book, Embers of War. They're definitely worth the read. Hey, thanks for watching. Please make sure to like and share and subscribe because that's how this channel is going to grow its viewership. Remember to sign up as a channel supporter by heading over to patreon.com slash gkjpublishing where you'll have access to four support tiers. Each tier comes with access to my new Discord server, sweet tier level perks, and special promotions. Don't forget to hit up the merch store. You can rep an item easily by posting a pic to social media or by wearing or holding it with the hashtag Five Kingdoms merch. Lastly, connect with me on Instagram and Twitter at GKJ underscore publishing, where you can tag me in those pics so I can feature them in a video. And I'll see you guys back here next week for the second author awareness interview featuring UK author Andy Slinger. The vlog of the Five Kingdoms is filmed without the use of a live audience at Skyrocket Studios in Hanford, California. We can't do what we do without your help, so please. Make sure to subscribe by clicking the button that's above my head, and make sure to watch and share the videos over here to my left. Have a great week.